Hello once again, welcome to our e-learning for today and for today's video we're going to discuss about reading comprehension strategies and this week we're going to call it week 7 from May 3 to May 7, 2020. Let's discuss the schedule for this week. For today, Sunday, you're going to watch until the end of this video patiently and you're going to complete the worksheet that I attach in your class dojo and finally you're going to study some spelling activities, some spelling list for the spelling challenge for Wednesday. For tomorrow, Monday, you're going to do the Socrative and the Socrative will cover up everything in this video. And finally, on Wednesday, you will do the required worksheet that will be reading comprehension number two. And you will be doing, if you are interested to compete for the spelling challenge, you're going to meet me in Zoom meeting and do the spelling bee challenge. So let's start with our lesson for today. So we have three topics for today. Number one, I'm going to teach you steps in answering unseen reading comprehension. So there will be quite a few steps in answering unseen comprehension. And number two, we're going to discuss about three types of questions in reading comprehension. And finally, what are the things to remember when you are doing and answering reading comprehension? So steps in answering. Number one, read the questions first. So what are you going to do? Get related ideas from the questions. And this will save more time. So when you are having unseen comprehension, when you're reading a story or a text or a passage, you need to read the questions first and then go back to, to the reading part. So the first step that you're going to do is read the questions. Okay, so for example, this is um, a reading comprehension uh, and you never read it before so because it's called unseen. Now, as you can see, this is a very short reading and there are uh, three questions here. Now, what are you going to do again is to read the questions first. So, Number one, this is the questions now. Where did Sen's journey on the Silk Road take him? So this is the question. And then you're going to look for that answer later on. Okay, so read the questions first so that you will be getting related ideas, getting ideas from the questions first. So that you will know what to underline, what to highlight, what to look for in this reading passage over here. Now, as you can see, I'll go back in this uh, reading comprehension test. So. This is the second paragraph, and you will read, This was Sen's first journey on the Silk Road, and it had taken him beyond the Great Wall of China. Now, Sen realized that China was only one part of the world. So, as you can see, where did Sen's journey? Where? So, the question is where. So, it's a place. So, which means that you can take it from the text right now. Before reading it, you know what to look. So, what's the place? So, as you can see, the answer is to lands outside of China. Why? Because of the word beyond the Great Wall of China, which means uh, to get out beyond uh, Great Wall of China. So with that idea, you can say to the lands outside of China. Now, again, read the second question. And uh, that's based on details in the passage. How did the Silk Road change China? So again, remember to read all the questions first before you go to the reading text. Because you need to get an idea about the question so that you will know what to look for. Okay? So here, you're going to look for how did the Silk Road change China? And that will be in this um, underlined sentences. So just 300 years ago, the Han Emperor knew nothing of India, Persia, Greece, or Rome. Chinese silk reached all of those places through trade. So 300 years ago, the Han Emperor knew nothing. Knew nothing, which means he doesn't know anything about these places. Okay, So which means what is the advantage of the Silk Road to China? So the answer here is that its letter G people in China became aware of the outside world. Now, again, that's a very, very easy question if and only if you knew oh, what is the question all about before reading. So remember to read the question first. Next, what prevented the Chinese and Romans from trading at first? So from getting this idea, you will know what to look for in this passage over here. So by that, it's here in this uh, underlined sentences. So the Romans traders did not speak Chinese and the Chinese traders did not speak the Roman language. So which means that the problem is in the language. So what's the answer here? It's letter B. They did not speak each other's language. So remember, this is first step. Read the questions first so that you can get idea, okay, what to look for in the reading passage before you read this, okay? So read the questions first, then the passage, all right? Now we go to the second step. The second step is read the text story twice, okay? So I've discussed this 
uh, before in our classes that you need to read this, the story or the text twice, but not the whole passage, okay? So you're going to um, read on, only the important paragraphs, okay? So reading only once is not enough. So even, even teachers, even uh, people who are very good in English, they need to read twice if they're answering uh, reading comprehension questions. So it is important to reread long paragraphs. So you need to look for long paragraphs or what you think is important and you're going to read it again if you did not understood it or understand it in the first place. So you need to reread it until you understand every detail. And finally, never miss an important detail. So you need to read it again, okay? So that's the second step, okay? So as you can see, going back here, you can see that uh, beyond the Great Wall of China, that is rereading. If you did not understand this, it means that when you say beyond the Great Wall of China, it means the places outside of China because uh, the Great Wall of China is covering um, China up, okay? So that's why the answer is to the lands outside of China. Next, another idea is nothing of India, uh, Persia, Greece, or Rome. So by getting that, you can get the idea that they don't, uh, they are not aware of the outside world. And finally, um, did not speak Chinese or did not speak the Roman's language. So with these ideas, if you reread it, so reading the text twice in these important paragraphs, you will get the idea of the correct answer. So that's the second step in answering unseen comprehension, which means that you need to look for ideas by rereading some paragraphs, okay? So let's go to the third uh, step in answering unseen comprehension. Number three, answer easier questions first. So this is number three. You are going to answer easier questions. Now, um, sometimes you answer one, two, three, four, five, up to 10 if there are 10 questions, but you will find like number three or number four are very difficult questions and you will be spending a lot of time reading and looking for the answer. If it's too hard for you, you need to go to the next number, number four or number five, because... Um, you will be wasting a lot of time and effort. So do not spend too much time in diffi difficult questions. So you need to answer the easier questions first so that you will be saving uh, time and effort. And you're going to skip time by consuming questions. So skip it, then get back. Okay, so you need to skip the questions. And then when you are done answering, you're going uh, to go back with these hard questions or difficult questions. And you will be having more time and little of effort. Okay, so that's the... Step number three, answer easier questions first. Next, number four, make use of keywords. What to do? Underline or highlight important words in the passage or text. So you need to underline important words. So if these are characters of the story, you need to underline the characters of the story. If these are the setting of the story or passage, you need to underline the, the setting or the place of the story. If these are uh, important details of the passage, you need to underline them. So. What are the, your keywords? So some of the keywords are the following. It can be verbs or action words. So when you say verbs, these are action words just like struggled, okay, cared, uh, abandoned, something like that. So you are going to look for who and what, which means the main details, all right? So I'll give you an example again, going back to this text. So as you can see here, uh, we're going to underline in the question the verbs, okay? So that is take, okay? So taken, as you can see here, by reading or underlining the word take, you can see the word taken here. So which means that this is giving you an idea that the this second paragraph is where you can find the correct answer. Next, let's go to the second one. Change China. So getting the idea from the word change China, you can get this idea. Thought that we had the only civilization. So because a Chinese uh, civilization before, they thought that they... They are the only world there. They thought that they are the only place in the world. However, it changed China because now they knew that there are many places in the world. Okay? So, finally, you are going to look for, again, um, prevented. So, verbs. Make sure that you underline important verbs in the question first. Take, change, and prevented. And you look for the same ideas in the paragraph or in the passage. As you can see here, prevented, which means they did not speak the Chinese language and did not speak the Romans language that prevented them trading actually all right so that's the fourth steps in answering unseen comprehension okay let's go to number five make use of context clues I know that you know about uh, using context clues remember that context clues are tips or hints you can find around vocabulary words so there will be 
many words that you will not understand in the passage, okay? But you will understand them by reading around or reading the sentence with that vocabulary word. So, understanding the meaning of the vocabulary word will help you answer unseen comprehension activities. So, for example, again, as you can see, this is the, the Silk Road, okay? You can pause this video if you want to read it. Now, the word interpreters. Interpreters, that's a vocabulary word for uh, elementary students. Now, let's discuss what it is. So, this is a con uh, vocabulary word and we're looking for context clues. So, we're going to read it. Everyone agrees, Achun said, the Persians will be our interpreters. Now, they could trade with the Romans. So, we can see here before that Chinese people and Roman people, when they are trading silk and materials, they cannot understand each other. So, the Persians will be our interpreters. So, what's the meaning of interpreters? So, interpreters, based on this one, now they could trade with Romans. It means that the Persians are someone who can translate the language from Chinese to Roman or Roman to Chinese. So, they will be the middleman translating each language so that they will be understanding each other. Okay? So that's why you can get the idea of interpreters by reading around and getting ideas from the passage so that you can give the meaning or find the meaning of the word interpreters, okay? Let's go to the next one. Number six, this is the final step in answering unseen comprehension activities. Number six, identify the main idea of each paragraph, okay? So remember, if there are seven paragraphs in the passage, there are seven main ideas. If there are 10 paragraphs in this passage or text, there are 10 main ideas, okay? Because authors divide the ideas using paragraphs, okay? So they divide uh, ideas by making it into paragraphs. So they write the first paragraph, that's one idea. Second paragraph, that's another idea. Third paragraph, that's another idea, okay? So usually, one paragraph means one main idea. Now, where do we find the main ideas in one paragraph? So, most of main ideas are found in the first and last sentences. Okay, so I'm going to show you right now what it is. We need to count how many paragraphs are there here. So, we have, that's number one. That's the first paragraph. That's the second paragraph. The, that's the fourth. That's the third paragraph. That's the fifth paragraph. The sixth paragraph. And the seventh paragraph. So, th there are seven paragraphs here. And there are seven small main ideas. Okay? So, we go here to the first paragraph. Now, where can we find the main idea of the first paragraph? In, in our discussion, it can be found in the first paragraph or in the last paragraph. Okay? So, we can see here, this is the first sentence. So, the Silk Road was about 4,000 miles, 6,400 kilometers long. So, which means that this can be the main idea or this one. So, the first and the last. Then, each group of traders went back the way they had come. So, in the first paragraph, we can say that the main idea is that the Silk Road is used for trading goods and it's, it's 6,400 kilometers long. So, which means that this is the main idea about the first paragraph. It talks about the Silk Road only and it is used for trading goods. Now, we go to the second paragraph, okay? So, for the second paragraph, this is the first sentence and, the second, uh, and then the last sentence. Now, I underline only this one because it's the most important uh, of them all. So, now Sen realized that China was only one part of the world. So, which means that China was only part of the world, okay? So, this is the main idea of the second paragraph. So, this is what we call the main idea, all right? Now, this main idea will give us um, idea, ideas or details how to answer the unseen comprehension, okay? So, that's the steps in answering unseen comprehension, all right? So, let's go to the second topic for today. What are the types of questions found in unseen comprehension tests? Okay, so we have three questions actually. So the first type of question is this, the literal question. So the literal questions are just like copy pasted coming from the text to a question. So they often start with what, who, when, where, why, and how. The keywords appear in the text question and answer. For example, the question, who glanced at the clock impatiently? So this is the question. Okay, of a passage. Now, one of the one of the texts, okay, so when you go back to the text, you found that Mrs. Jones glanced at the clock impatiently. So the answer here is Mrs. Jones because of the question who, which means looking for a person. And you can see the verbs are the same, glance or glance. Okay, so everything is the same. Okay, so which means that your answer here is Mrs. Jones because you can see the questions who 
and this is actually the text. So literal questions are actually the easiest types of questions. So you can just look for the verbs and the question and you will look at the text then you will find the correct answers. The second one is what we call inference questions. So the words are not the same in the question and in the in the passage. So the authors, the writers of these uh, questions, they use different words, but they mean the same thing, okay? So like, for example, uh, glance. You can also use the, the word look, okay? Glance or find now, something like that. Now, authors give readers extra details by giving clues. So the authors of every uh, passage, they have actually um, readers, um, they have put it, they put details before in, uh, they have put details in the reading passage. Now, inferences require you to think and search for clues and solve the answer. So what are you going to do is that you're going to, to look, you need to think and search for clues around the passage, okay? So it's, so it's a little bit difficult, but if you read it carefully, you read it twice, you read it, you read the questions first, this question will be easier if you followed all the six steps that I uh, discussed, okay? So you need to underline, you need to look for context clues, you need to look for, for main ideas, something like that. Where do you find the answer of an inference question? An inference question, you need to look every paragraph. So answers are linked from different paragraphs of the text. So you can see or you can find the answer by reading from paragraph to another paragraph. So that's the second type of question, the inference question. You need to think and search, and the answers are actually from different paragraphs, okay? The ideas are from the different paragraphs. So this is the example of inference questions. What text evidences show that Chinese people only knew about China for more than 300 years? So what text evidence? So you need to find the text evidences here where people in China before they knew that there's only one part of the world and that's only China, okay? So you can find it in the third paragraph and coming from the uh, second paragraph. So you can get ideas from the second, third, and sometimes fourth paragraph, okay? And number two, why is the Silk Road important to China, okay? So there's no uh, single sentence that will explain here or single paragraph answering why is the Silk Road important to China. You can get the ideas from the first paragraph, the third paragraph, the fifth paragraph, whatsoever. So which means that you will get the ideas coming from the text, okay? From different paragraphs. That's what we call inference questions. So you will uh, answer some like this in your uh, worksheet later on. And finally, let's go to the third type of uh, questions. And that is what we call evaluation questions. So what are you going to do is that you need to base your answers on your own. So on your own opinion, okay? So in your own experiences and evidence to explain why characters are thinking, feeling, or behaving in a particular way. So for example, if there are questions based on your own idea, you need to add your ideas to explain some details, okay? So it sometimes it, it starts with the question, what do you think? Or in your opinion, okay? And there is no right uh, answer. So you need to explain your ideas carefully, okay? Now, I'm going to give you some examples of evaluation questions based from this example over here. So example of evaluation questions. What do you think about Chinese trade before the use of the Silk Road? So again, it starts with what do you think? So what is your idea right now? So before the, the, the trading of the Silk Road, with using the Silk Road, how do Chinese trade uh, before? So where do they trade? Okay, do they trade with other countries or they, do they trade on their own only? And in number two, in your opinion, how did the Persians learn about Roman and Chinese language? In this text, you can see that Persians can talk in Chinese and talk in Roman language. In your opinion, how did they uh, learn these la two languages? Okay, so as you can see here, these are examples of evaluation questions. So to summarize these three, we have literal questions, inference questions, and in number three, we have evaluation questions. Your answers are based on your experiences or your ideas. Let's go to the third short topic. We, we have to discuss what are the things to remember when you're answering unseen comprehension tests. So every answer can and should be found or inferred from the story or the passage. So which means that every question and answer are already found in in the text okay so if you have any question for example in any any detail and you cannot find it do not complain because everything is actually in the text so you need to look for it find it okay next do not try to draw conclusions from outside knowledge unless it is required by question so what do we mean by this so some students will be thinking oh i think about this one i think i i read about 
this idea before. Do not try to copy ideas or get ideas from different ideas from the books, other books, because that's what that you're reading, okay? So what you're reading, you will get only ideas from what you're reading right now. Do not get ideas from other books or other passages. Finally, the third idea to things, uh, things to remember is to read each instructions carefully. Some of you directly goes to the to the questions, okay, and then answers them without reading the instructions. But the first thing that you need to do is to read the instructions carefully. You need to read every part of the test. You need to follow instructions carefully by reading them thoroughly, okay? To summarize our ideas, I have discussed six strategies or tips in reading comprehension. We have three types of questions, and we have three things to remember, and you're going to answer this summary in your worksheet for today, all right? So let's go to the um, worksheet right now, and including the spelling challenge on Wednesday. I'm going to give you ideas about it. Let's click it here. So this is your um, worksheet for today for grade 6 English Unseen Reading Comprehension Skills and Strategies and spelling worksheet actually. Now, for the worksheet, you're going to answer these things that we discussed in the video. You're going to uh, list six strategies or steps in answering. So A, B, C, D, E, F and the three questions and the three things to remember. You need to fill it up. So everything is in the video. You need to watch it so that you can answer this one. If you did not watch it, you cannot fi find any answer here. And I will know that you did not watch the video. Now, for the second activity, this is the uh, reading comprehension. You need to read this one page only, and you're going to answer um, A, B, C, all right? And then you will have short response test. This will be evaluation and inference questions. It's only three questions. And finally, after doing that, if you are interested to challenge and participate in the Spelling Bee um, challenge or competition on Wednesday, I want you to read and study everything that's in here. So there are, um, I think, 100 words. So what are you going to do is that you're going to study this and we will have a spelling challenge on Wednesday, May 6, 2020, Zoom meeting at 4 o'clock to 4.40 p.m. And the first three winners will be given a certificate of recognition. So the words here will be part of our elimination round. So I'll be asking one by one each question if you are eliminated. You will not go to the final round. Those people with, uh, who will go to the final round, which are the top six people, we are not going to use this um, list, but I'm going to give you some that are not part of the list, okay? So which we call the unseen spelling list. So I think that's the end of our lesson for today. Thank you for watching. This is Mr. Johnson signing off. Thank you and goodbye.